Hey, this is Kevin Kitchens of Once Upon a Game, and today we're going to look at the Falling Stars role-playing and tactical game system. Uh, this is a beginner game box set. It's by Lock and Load Publishing. Um, all I know about it is there is a Falling Stars uh, computer game, kind of a 4X game. Uh, there is an advanced RPG system that they've got going, you know, with the full rules and book and everything. This is the beginner game, and it contains everything you need to play, including some... I was reading uh, some uh, tiles, you know, floor tiles, build your map as you go kind of thing, which is kind of interesting. Not sure if it's specifically designed to be a solo game. Um, comes with pre-gen characters, like you see with a lot of the uh, role-playing, uh, excuse me, a lot of the role-playing games. Um, these are Star Wars, Lord of the Rings had it. I'm sure others do where they come out with a beginner set that has your characters already set for you and everything. So um, I'm going to open it up, take a look at what's inside. Uh, I used to play Traveler a lot. Magnus, excuse me, take that. I used to read the Traveler books a lot when I was a teenager. Um, we create characters, do all sorts of things with that because uh, it's just it's just an awesome system. I just never got even back then didn't didn't play with people so, um, uh, but really enjoyed it. And so I'm looking forward to this. If it's not uh, designed against solo, yeah, there's plenty of options out there for people who play RPG solo. Um, in order to simulate the actions uh, and make the choices uh, for the game master. So we'll just open it up, see what's inside. I've been dying to, dying to take the shrink off this one, but I was waiting for, uh, for the camera uh, to become available. So anyway, here we go. So you got your beginning game book. Now, like all the latest stuff from uh, Lock and Load, their board games, the, the quality of the manual without even opening it feels really great. I mean, it's you know, thick, nice square bind on it, paperback. Um, and I bet the book is going to be really good. I mean, I don't know if the rules are going to be any good, but the layout and everything will be great. So you got a big, big print. Uh, so it'll be easier for younger kids to get into if necessary. Uh, oh, and that's awesome. We love designing, developing, and most of all, playing games. We thank God for blessing us so we can follow our passions and our family, friends, and, of course, our fans. Awesome, awesome, awesome dedication. The best. Anyway. All right. So what is a role-playing game before we begin? The Game Master of the Players. So, obviously, there is a Game Master. Game Master is a person who sets the stage, describing the scene, creates the drama. Players explain what they intend to do, so it's... Uh, it looks like it does require a GM of some sort, either some sort of um, AI that you, you bring to the game or whatever. So what's in the box? We have uh, dice, everything you need to run your first adventure, including pre-made characters, you will find included in the box. Further, you will find rules of play, descriptions of weapons and equipment, etc., etc., etc. So here we go. Full color. Just talking about your characters and their attributes, uh, some pretty standard stuff, strength, agility, appearance, intelligence, aptitude, and personality. Uh, you know, some of the pretty standard tropes for uh, role-playing. Uh, almost a slide around, so, so nice and slick. All right, gameplay and combat, got a section on that. Hope they have the, all the charts spread out somewhere, like, or not spread out, but in a concise location. Good pictures to describe the concepts. I assume they accurately do it. I'm not reading the whole thing right now. We have equipment. Of course, we have equipment with two Ps, so there's a typo. Uh, but maybe it just means they go to the bathroom in space. I don't know. Um, okay, so there's stuff on factions, I guess. Uh, there's obviously maps here for the that you're going to play on. Uh, and, I, and this is, I think, just showing you the layout. We'll dig deeper. So anyway, here's the book. That's the book. Now we have our, uh, oh, these are our pilot do or, uh, character dossiers here. So we have Lieutenant Dorian Glass, who is a UPCN pilot. And he gets all his special actions and information. Oh, that's a quick reference card, so he just gets one. So you can mark him up. Uh, I don't know that I would want to permanently write on this, though. Hopefully they have these for download, in case you want to play this with more groups. There's a quick reference, single page, nice, nice coded card stock, very good. Uh, those your action points, the different long actions you can take, so it's a quick reference, that's good. They, Lock and Load has been really good about providing 
uh, player aids, player references, uh, you know, rule summaries, things like that. It's really cool. All right, Denver McAndrews, outside hacker. These may be pieced together again. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, so we got Denver McAndrews. Uh, then we got another sheet. Oh, they just kind of lumped them together here. So this is AI computer. Oh, you know what? I'll tell you what, I take it. I take back what I said. This is actually Denver McAdam McAndrews sheet number two. So they're tucked in, not as an accident of packing, but intentionally. So this quick reference is actually, well, this is just a quick reference. It doesn't say it specifically for Dorian Glass. So oh, it's, it's the joy of unboxing. You learn things as you go. Ensign Nona Perez. She looks like a Kilrathi. And she has a, well, it's another quick reference, but it's probably the same one, but I guess this is designed so you can just hand whoever's gonna play Nona, you can say, here you go. Here's your information. So she's the medic, and I'm going by she. Yes, she's the daughter. I was going by the name. Uh, and then now we've got Weirdo here. Uh, Forearmed Zern Endeavor. She's a Cerulean, Cerulean Paragon. No idea what that is. Probably some kind of mind creature of some sort. So you open her up, and she's got her psionics chart. And this is definitely her second sheet dedicated to her. And we got one more here. Well, apparently you can add cybernetics, so you can kind of go deus ex on this and, and upgrade everybody. It's interesting. Lieutenant Commander Lul McMullen, Scottish. His eye patch and his, and his like a Scottish beret. I know this phrase of French, but that looks like a Scottish one. Uh, UPC and officer. And he grew up on Mars. And he only gets one L because it says here his parents didn't like the standard spelling. So maybe that's why he uses equipment with two Ps. Uh, and he's got a standard quick reference card and all his stat sheets. And now we got Kimberly Lourdes Brooks. She's a hegemony agent. And boy, she has a fancy name. And wow, that looks a lot like Blade Runner. The Tyrell Corporation there. Uh, she grew up in a poor colony world, escaped to business school. And then she got a rich person's name like Kimberly Lourdes Brooks. So she is an agent. So she's your rogue, I guess. You got your types. I guess you got a rogue. You got your cleric. You got your thief. You got your tank. Uh, your medic. You got your hacker, which I guess is your rogue kind of thing. Assassin. Oh, no, it looks like we got another one. Goodness gracious, you got lots of lots of characters. This is awesome. I guess you don't use them all. And it's an Iris Weiss. All right, she's a technician. And she's from the slums of Venus. So Venus has been colonized enough to have slums now. And last but not least, Corporal, I think. I keep thinking it's last. Corporal Claire Knoll, a UPC and Marine. And she's from South Africa. She hid her pampered home life from her friends to work and work to make her bones her own. Make her bones on her own. So she earns her bones. So she's a Marine. So you got a lot to choose from. I don't think you're going to probably run all eight. So uh, find sampling. I like the I like the little dossiers. Again, they're all very nice, thick stock, two parts for each character. All right. So now we see what we got here. We have, Oh, look at this. We do not have pieces to make up the ships. We apparently have maps to make up the ships. Now this is awesome. So I don't know if we can see this or not. I'm going to zoom out and show you my floor there a little bit. You put the two maps together. There you go. So this is really traveler-esque. The Azanti High Lightning uh, system that they used to uh, that they used to have as a standalone game, which I have and I want to get around to playing, but this is even bigger and nicer. So, I'll show you some more of the maps here. These are all parts of the bridge. This is map four, the bridge. This is map three, the flight deck. I guess it shows you where it's supposed to go in the setup. Oh, this is the flight deck map. This map. This map goes here in the six. This map goes here in the six. So you get six maps and you piece them together. Flight deck. 
very nice. Again, thick, 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 thick. You're probably gonna have to put it under some plexi or something. Though. I don't know how you're gonna weight these down. Uh, so we got the the other part of the bridge, and here we've got. Oh, this is the main bridge. This is part two of the main bridge. This is a great, great little set. Goodness gracious. Talk about immersive. That looks like you got some kind of turret that sits there. This is the main deck. Main deck. Main deck. But wait, there's more. Ooh, that looks like a hanger. Flight deck. So you got a flight deck, little planes on it, and I guess another turret. Maybe those are ceiling mounted or something. They're out nine in red. Of course, you read the rules, you learn this stuff. Flight deck, which is another six maps because it's got to be so big. Flight deck, flight deck, flight deck, and main bridge. Another part of the main bridge. All right. So there are. You got eight characters. You got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen or eighteen of them. I think I miscounted. Maps. Map sections. Two dice. Let's check. Do they work? They work. All right. Ten sided. Love them. And then a baggie of counters. You don't get a punch board of counters, you get them pre punched. I think the goal here is you just crack this open and start playing, which is kind of an admirable goal. Let's see what you get in here. Dump them out. Not too many. They're large. So there's Lowell's counter. They're squared off, so definitely going to hit those with the, the Oregon Laminations rounder. So I guess blue is the good guys and brown is the bad guys kind of thing. Here's a guard. Hello, I'm a guard. I'm going to attack you. And we got Yojiro, maybe an NPC. We got Fina, and I don't remember seeing these character sheets, so these must be some NPCs or something. Claire, another guard. Kind of daft to guard her. We're the guards. Um, Brigand, so they're double sided, I guess. They have a facing arrow, they have a way to get lost on my table. So, anyway, lots of counters, very thick, nice and sturdy. Yeah, it might need to be rounded, but they're pretty pretty—they're pretty clean, too. So, um, Anyway, so if you're looking for a sci-fi RPG, I'll, uh, I'll play it and report back. But this is just what you get in the box. And it's a lot of stuff. Goodness gracious, I don't even know. Now that I've expanded it, it's all going to go back in the box. That is, it's like it was air. Look at that. It's coming out of the box, unless you stack it correctly. That's pretty awesome. All right, so that is the Falling Stars role-playing and tactical system beginner game. And that is what you get in the box. Thanks. Thanks for watching.